I am inadequate. I am unacceptable. I am unimportant. I am unattractive. I am not smart or popular. I am not influential. I am not gifted. And I am not good enough. Have you ever had one of these thoughts? I know I have. But the question is, are these thoughts true? Absolutely not. Unfortunately, numerous people are so dissatisfied with themselves that they alter the original person God created them to be. According to SeriouslyFacts.me, 80% of people worldwide have low self-esteem. Something these individuals don't realize is that they are like a painting. No matter how many copies of a painting are made, the original is always the most valuable and most desirable. Today, I am here to persuade you to be the original. Throughout my speech, I will endeavor to answer two questions. First, why should I be original? And secondly, how do I become original? Before we get into my points, however, I find it necessary to define the original. In the context of my speech, I have defined the original as a state that individuals find themselves in when they are being who God meant for them to be. To be original is not an excuse, but a responsibility. With this in mind, let's begin with the first question. Why should I be original? I think Benjamin Franklin put it best when he said, If everyone is thinking alike, then no one is thinking. This quotation provoked a great deal of personal thought. I came to the conclusion that if we ignore who we are, society suffers. Can you imagine what our country would be like if George Washington thought that he was inadequate to lead the United States in the Revolutionary War? Can you imagine what this world would be like if the Wright brothers decided that they weren't good enough to build an airplane? And can you imagine what the music industry would be like if Elvis Presley thought he wasn't gifted enough to be the king of rock and roll? History is full of people that decided to be the original and in turn, they changed the world. But this doesn't just apply to the past. You have the ability to change the world. For example, a man that works with my dad experimented with this idea when he was in the Navy on a ship. In the morning, he and his friends would intentionally hum a song. And later in the day, they would listen and hear others humming the same song they had been humming. This proves that you, can positively or negatively affect the people around you. After all, we are living our future generation's history books right now. Do you want to go down in history as a person that made a difference because they chose to be original? Or do you want to be known as a person that went along with what everyone else did? Be the original for the sake of everyone else in this world. We need you to be simply you. By being original, you will also help yourself. According to heartofleadership.com, quote, more than 90% of girls 15 to 17 want to change at least one aspect of their physical appearance, end quote. When I was 14, the one thing I wanted to change about myself was my hair. You see, I had just lost a good portion of my hair due to an autoimmune disorder called alopecia areata. One afternoon, as I was getting ready for a church event, I realized that all the other girls would have their hair pristinely fashioned while I was confined to the fashion of a hat. But it was right there. As I stared at my reflection in my bathroom mirror, when I didn't want to go anywhere ever again, that God showed me it doesn't matter what other people think of me. That was the moment when I decided to be me. All of a sudden, I lost that feeling of inferiority and I found the freedom to be myself. Be the original so that you can find this freedom. Now that we know why we should be original, it's time to find out how to be original. You can't be yourself if you don't know who you are. So let's take a moment to define you. Psalm 139.13 says, For it was you who created my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. 
Notice that it says knit together, not manufactured or mass produced, but knitted. Each thread that God used was a piece of what makes you so special. According to How Stuff Works, quote, no two people have been found to have the same fingerprints. They are totally unique. There's a 1 in 64 billion chance that your fingerprint will match up exactly with someone else's, end quote. That is pretty spectacular. One of the smallest parts of you tells the beautiful story of your unique creation. So who are you? You are God's wonderful, exceptional, remarkable, extraordinary, one-of-a-kind creation. Once you accept that, you will be on your way to becoming the original. The next step is to stop copying others. When I was little, I went through a I-have-to-wear-glasses-to-be-cool stage. My two best friends at the time had just gotten glasses, and I did not want to be left out. When we went to the eye doctor the next time, I nervously waited for him to tell me how my eyes were. I almost jumped for joy when he told me that I barely needed to get glasses for reading. I proudly wore those glasses around my friends, and I was shocked to find out one of them had gotten contacts. Recently, I ran across a picture of myself wearing those hideous glasses. Every time I see that picture, I'm reminded that being yourself is always better than copying someone else. The final step to becoming the original is to change the way you think about yourself. If you regularly think the thoughts that I presented at the beginning of this speech, please listen closely. What we think is what we become. If you dwell on the negative long enough, you will become, at least in your own mind, those negative things. But Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you. This is the Lord's declaration, plans for your welfare and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. When negative thoughts begin to flood your mind, remember that God has a purpose for you. You have the privilege to do something that no one else can do. Be the original. This speech has been very heavy on my heart for a while now. My prayer every day since last summer has been that you will leave this room convinced to be the original you. It might be hard at first, but when you taste that freedom, you will see that it is totally worth it. Since I covered so much in my points today, I'd like to have a short recap. First, I talked about why you should be original. I said that being original helps others and can help yourself. Secondly, I talked about how to become the original. I mentioned that in order to be yourself, you must know that you are a one-of-a-kind creation. You must stop copying others, and you must change the way you think about yourself. One of my favorite stories from my childhood is the time that I composed a poem. You see, I have two brothers. One is older and the other is younger. When I was about six years old, I think I was feeling sorry for myself one day, and I wrote, I'm not big, and I'm not little. I am just in the middle. Even when I was six, I wanted to be like anyone other than myself, but praise be to God, I have broken free of that. And I hope you will break free of that too, this very moment, because you are adequate, you are acceptable, you are significant. You are smart and popular. You are influential. You are gifted. And yes, you are good enough. I'd like to leave you today with some wise words from the beloved Dr. Seuss. Today, you are you. That's truer than true. There's no one alive that is your than you. God has given us an opportunity to change the world by being who he has created each of us to be. So when you step out of your door, go change the world. Go and be the original.